Zach, aka Zach Reviews. We are back again with another video, and today was the Falcon and Winter Soldier Day. Uh, this is episode two. Um, there will be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't watched this uh, the second episode yet, go watch the episode and come back here to the channel and watch my review. Also, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to that. So, um, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Like this video, um, because I would just love to have you guys a part of this community here slash family, and just uh, and I'll talk about things we love, and I'm just love to have you guys here. Um, but literally in this episode, we start off, uh, with John Walker and I, I, I was talking to my sister and brother. I was like, I really want to see more of his character because I know in the comics he's bad, but I really wanted to see like how he would get there or how they would start that character. And honestly, it makes it look like he, as of right now, just wants to do the, like wants to be able to like, I guess... Like, like, he knows it's a big symbol, and it looks like he's trying his best to, you know, give America what he thinks that they need, and, like, and trying to, like, and trying to, he said, like, even said, as he said to Sam, he doesn't want really, to, he knows he's, he's not trying to be Steve, he's not trying to be anything, he's just trying to live up to the mantle of Captain America and just try his best, and I know there is parts that, like, that dude has such an anger problem, and I think that's really going to key in, and it feels like he's just so... Like, he, and, like, I just, I don't know, he seems like a hothead, and just to see where that's gonna go, and to see how, what, because always, as we all know, Sam and Bucky get the shield at some point, and I wonder what John does that gets to that point where they take the shield away from him, because in this episode, we see how it's the start of, he's in the locker room of, I guess, his old school, and they're, and they're gonna introduce the Cap on the field, like we've been seeing in the trailers, how, you know, Cap runs out on the field, and they're having, like, a big, like, parade for him. And the thing that was crazy about that is, is we get to see his uh, wife or his girlfriend and they're talking about, oh, it's crazy that, you know, you're here again. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, now, you know, I'm, I, I was the captain of the football team. Now I'm the captain, you know, I'm Captain America. And, and to see, and then when, you know, she leaves and he says, I love you, just to see the other guy come in. And I think he, I, I, if I'm correct, I think he was... I forget who he was. I think that guy was Captain America at one point too, or in the comic books. I think I I'm not sure. All I know is that he's somebody from the comics. But all, all I'm putting together is is that because I heard we were going to see different Captain Americas, like you know name drops uh, of people that were Captain America in the comic books, and I think that dude was another Captain America. So what's crazy to me is just to see how. He's complaining about all the work I guess he has to do, and then the other dude's like, "Yeah, it's a part of the job. I mean, that's you know, that's Captain America. It's 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 the it's the Star Spangled Man. It's the giving America hope." And he's like, "You know, that's a part of the job. You're not just gonna be able to shoot your way out of things anymore." And just that's that alone is just like, how does a person like that get to a person like get to be Captain America? And I hopefully we'll see in the in the more why he got chosen. I guess for Captain America in a way. I hope we get more of why they did that. We we did, but when he went out on the field, they played the Star Spangled Man with the plan. Like we go saw in Captain America: The First Avenger, we saw that song where Cap when you know Steve is doing the propaganda propaganda stuff and you know you know making people you know buy war bonds to help out the war. And they played that song and I was like, oh my God, but they modified it. And it's, it's crazy to me. I just could, I was like, oh my God, I'm just so upset right now that this dude just is like, oh my God, has cap shield and just is, it just annoyed me because he's signing everything. He's taking pictures. And then when we get to the point where he's sitting on the stage and he's explaining about like, you know, I guess what it like about like how it's very surreal for him to be Captain America and all that. And just to see the reporter read off, like, like about, you know, what he's done, you know, because he was, a, he's in the military, and apparently he's won three uh, Medal of Honors, apparently he, uh, and like, and like, he had great physicality, he's a great fighter, and, and, and fighting styles, and him throwing the shield in the practice, bro, that was easy dub, like, he was throwing it, catching it, throwing it, catching it, that was insane to me, I'm like, holy crap, this dude's really good with the shield, how the hell, how, how? Because as we know, it's it's very hard to use Cap's shield as we know, and Cap it only made sense for Cap using it because he was good with the his eye. When you got that serum, your eye coordination was better. You could think on your feet quicker. You 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 are you're fast. Your physicality, your strength and speed and everything is on point. 
So, and that, and I was like, okay, that's understand why he's able to use that. And because, you know, he would be able to catch something that fast. I guess that really doesn't matter anymore because, I mean, we've seen Hawkeye throw it, but that made sense to me because Hawkeye is very precision and knows how to throw things and shoot things. So that made sense to me. But just to see John Walker throw that thing and catch it like it was a yo-yo, I was like, what the F? <laughs> I'm like, that just happened. I'm like, that's pretty cool. But Cap, of course, throws it better. Cap, Cap is literally a master at throwing that thing. He could do it in cool-ass ways. But I was just like, wow, for, you know, some guy, all right, some regular guy using the shield. I'm like, that's pretty impressive. I'm like, damn. I'm like, I hate to admit it, but that was pretty cool. <laughs> but I don't know. Just to, I, I can't wait to see more of why they chose him and also why he gets the shield taken away from him. Like, I'm wondering what level do they go to as the why they take it from him? Because in this episode, you know, Bucky's like, let's just take the shield. And he's like, we're not just going to beat the guy up and take his sh and take the shield. Like, it's over with, man. And I'm wondering, what's that What's that one thing that Walker does that they have to take that shield back? I'm wondering what, what that is. But, you know, after the scene where he's, where, where he's talking on the stage, we get to the point where Bucky is sitting in his place and is watching the screen. And you can just tell he's, heart he's heartbroken that Sam gave the shield up and that happened. When he knew... That he knew what what Steve said. He said he when he knew Steve wanted Falcon to become the next Captain America, and he knew it. So he felt like he, he felt almost he felt betrayed from Sam that Sam did that to Steve when that was Steve's last wishes was to him to become Captain America, and just to see why Sam doesn't really want to do it is he's like you know you and Steve would never understand you know as a as a black man you know what this means and all that so. Just to see, um, I, I hope we, like, I mean, because again, I mean, it makes sense that the, the, the mantle of Captain America, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, like, history behind it, but it's, in a way, it, it was a, it was America's, uh, a symbol, but it was a white dude, as uh, people in America usually see fit back in the day was a, a white dude, and that's what they did for Captain America, and just to see, the history of so much racism in America, I understand why Sam didn't want to take it, but I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's, it's a hard situation both ways, but again, Sam should have just taken it up. He should have done that because look what happened. I, it's such a hard situation and I love, it's like a hard situation. And I'm, I love how they're talking about racism in America because, you know, people, a lot of people don't want to hear about it, but when you put it into something, that makes that you know that you know people watch all the time with superhero stuff. Hopefully, it gets through their head, you know, and it's another outlet to realize that you know that's not people just assumed Sam would have done it, and it makes sense why he doesn't want to do it, and it just means a lot to me because you know it's it is a it's like it's a good conflict that you know it it, it makes you wonder like if this was his real situation and you were in Sam's shoes, what would you do? Because I mean, as a black man, again, you you know. That's something I would not be surprised if a lot of people in America would not be ready for something like that. And even in today's society, and it's crazy to me that people think that way, but they do. And I just don't understand it. But literally, I just, I, I love how it's, it's a battle with Sam. Like, with, with it's, it's literally a double-edged sword. If you take it up, people, you know, people just wouldn't accept it. And the government probably wouldn't let him have the shield. And if he did take it up, again, they they would still take it from him. So it's kind of like, it's, it's a, literally a double-edged sword and I'm, 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 I can't wait to learn more about about that and how he's going to overcome that or even if he does end up taking up the shield because there's speculations that, you know, um, um, what, um, what, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Isaiah Bradley, apparently, um, as we, we end up finding out in the, um, well, actually, before we even get there, we end up getting to the point after where Bucky finds out, Bucky goes to Sam, pretty much yells at Sam for it, about, I can't believe you gave up the shield, look what happened, and Sam's seeing all the posters around saying Cap's back and everything, and, and then there, he's about to go on the plane because Red Wing got some information on the Flag Smashers, and he's gonna go track, the, track them down and go to this warehouse, and he, and, and Bucky's like, you know, you don't have to, you don't, tr like, uh, I, what, don't trust what Red Wing, and he's like, you don't have to trust Red Wing, but I do, I'm gonna go see if he's right. So they end up, Sam ends up going, and he's like, I'm going with you. And he's like, no, you're not. And they end up getting on the plane. And that's the same clip that we saw and I did the re uh, reaction to. As I'm on the plane, they're looking at each other, and he's getting ready to jump off the plane. And then and, and, and Bucky's going to be like, what's the plan? And he just jumps off. And we see that happen. 
And when he does that, and, he, and then the, and then um, I forget the one dude's name that was with Sam earlier in the uh, in the first episode, but he's like the uh, what what's his name? I think his name is Joaquin. Joaquin. Yeah. Okay, I guess his name is Joaquin. Um, I guess uh, he's like uh, well, Bucky's like, where's the other parachutes? He's like, there is no parachutes. He's like, I don't need one. And then I was like, oh crap! I'm like, hey, you definitely need one. You're not cat, bro. I, yeah, you have the serum, but when you jump down there, I will never forget be able to do the stick the landing. So when he jumped down, he starts eating crap, lands, and then Sam with Red Wing says, I got all that on camera, dude. And he's like, get, the, get, get it out of my face before I break it. And then he gets it out of his face, and he ends up walking with it, and he's like, okay, meet me in the warehouse. And they go, well, he's going into the warehouse, of course, Red Wing's still around him, he does this, and he's like, don't break him. And then they get to the point where they're like pretty much bickering. He's like, okay, let's take him, uh, Bucky. And then and, and Sam's like, hold on, wait a second. Let's just wait and see how this all plays out. Because we don't know. We don't know how this could, you know, if there's if there's other guys here. We don't know, like, because again, they're strong. So we don't know how the, what the outcome could be. And I want to track and see where they're going. And then Bucky just wants to get in there and go fight people and just get it, get it done with. So they can go... Because he thinks the bigger problem at hand is the fact that Bucky didn't, I mean, that Sam didn't take up the shield. He's more caring about that. That's the only reason why he went is to find out why he did that, why and why this is happening. Because he just can't, couldn't believe that that, that happened. And, he, and he's like, okay, he's like, I have a metal arm. We can take him. I have a vibranium arm. He's like, yeah, I have, I have wings that are, are shields. So what? He's like, look, I just want to see where they're going. And then they hit a can by mistake. And then, of course, before, like, I guess when he went over to the area, while Sam was telling him the wait, he said, oh, he's like, oh, I guess you're, what are you, the White Panther now? He's like, it's the White Wolf. And that was funny. That he was like, they were doing the jokes about that. I love how, like, the joking elements, Marvel's always good at this. They put the joking elements in the right times that I love, and it doesn't feel forced. I love that about Marvel with just everything. But, um, so then we get to the point where they bump the can, the, 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 um, the people, the Flag Smashers turn around and thinking they hear something, and then they just get going. And we see the same scene in the trailer where, um, Bucky's running out and the Falcon's flying up, and then we're getting to the same, we're getting to that, uh, the chase sequence in the forest slash highway, and they're on the, uh, trucks. And then we see, of course, you know, Bucky running, jumping on the truck, going in because he saw on Red Wing, Sam saw on Red Wing's, uh, scanner that apparently was a hostage in the truck. So Bucky ends up jumping in the truck, and then they open the door, and that's Carly. She's the leader of the Flag Smashers, I think. And she was all, like, she was hiding, and then Bucky's like, it's okay, come out, are you okay? And then she gets, grins, I'm like, oh shit, dude. I'm like, that's not good. She, she's not helpless, and she's, she's not a hostage. And then she just kicks him out. And he just splats against the glass, and he's like, oh shit. And then they end up doing the fighting sequence on the truck, which was badass, this was so worth the wait. This was the action-packed episode I've been waiting for, and this was so worth the wait. Just to see how those two guys are holding Bucky. She's just, like, punching him, and then next thing, Red Wing flies in, tries to shoot at her. She grabs Red Wing, smashes him, and I saw that in the trailer. In the trailer, I was like, that's Red Wing she just broke. And then we see her just grab, like, well, freaking Sam kicks her. She gets back up. She throws him over. The uh, two other guys grab him, and then guess who saves the day? Um, it was John Walker, and it was his partner. I forget the other dude's name, but I, I but I think if I'm correct, he was a, a Captain America in the comics. I I, I read because I was doing like Easter eggs and stuff, and I guess he is. So, as so John Walker comes down, throw, throws the shield. He's throwing it like it's a yo-yo. Um, I just I'm trying to wrap my head around the way this dude throws the shield. It's just it's so weird to me. Like. Uh, did he just get that right away? Or did, like, how much practice did he, did he have to have to, to be able to do that? Because his precision was pretty damn good. I was like, okay, that's pretty impressive. I'm like, because again, like, I'm not used to seeing that. Like, I didn't expect people were just, like, regular humans were going to be able to throw it so easily and be able to make it do all that. I'm still trying to process. I guess it's just a shield and I guess anybody can really technically use it. So I'm just trying to get over that. And he was throwing it good. He pretty much helped Bucky and them get out of the situation. But the second he was throwing the shooter and bouncing off people, and then when Bucky caught it, and then and then Walker just took it back. I was, but you could tell how pissed Bucky was that he had that shield. He's like, he's like, you should not be throwing it that way, and you shouldn't even have it. I love how, like, it makes sense Bucky would would be so protective of that because that was, that was his best friend's legacy. That was Steve's legacy, and, and Steve meant so much to him. And, lo and like, and the, the fact of this is that since... And that really hurt, again, Bucky the most is because that was the last thing 
Steve said to like any of them was like that was the last request he had and Sam did not follow through. So with him going, having Sam not throwing, following through and then Walker giving the shield and then pretty much in a way Bucky feels like since since he's like, cause Sam said, you know, like early, like later in the episode, he says that, um, who's like, you guys aren't, and will never understand what it's like or whatever. And then, and he's like, he's like, I'm like, I, it was not my, it was not my choice. It was not my right, I guess, to pick up the shield. And he's like, he's like, if, 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 um, he's like, Cap wasn't right to pick me. He's like, if Cap wasn't right to pick you, then he wasn't right about me, meaning that he would be okay. And he would be able to, and he would just be okay. Because think about it. He just got his friend back being normal Bucky and having his friend leave, it just, it hurt him. And just to see how he thought that in a way that the one request that, you know, he thought that the one request that, you know, Steve would have made that Sam would have followed through because if if Steve would have requested Bucky to do that, to take up the mantle, he probably would have because that was the last request that Steve made. So just to see that all play out on the, on the freaking um, truck situation, that was just insane to me because again, like, there was one moment where, of course, you know, you know, Bucky slides down, almost gets hurt, and the one guy is hitting his arm, trying to make him just get trampled by the truck. And then Sam literally is trying to come, go and save him because Sam gets knocked off and does that wing thing and pops his wings up to be able to fly because the one guy knocks him off the truck and tries to save Bucky. But then the guy sees him in the rear view mirror, turns it over, and then he couldn't go, and then he had to do it again got Bucky out of there, and then they rolled into, in like, into, like, the, uh, fields, and then after that, we end up seeing the sequence where, you know, John ends up shooting the person, and then someone knocks his friend off, he throws the shield, so he's able to use it as, like, a sled, so he's, be, that was, that was clever, that was a clever way to keep him fine, it was, it reminded me of a very callback to when Cap did the thing with, uh, Natasha and Sam in the car, and he did that so he they would be able to slide out, so I was like, that's pretty cool that he thought on his feet like that, so, and then when we get to that moment, he's like, you shouldn't have done that. And then the girl literally just kicks him off or punches him off and makes him land on the car. And then he just gets off, takes his helmet off and he's upset. Meaning, dude, I'm sorry. You're not Steve, man. You don't have this, the powers of Steve. So you're not going to be able to go against guys like this. I mean, without that shield, you just can't do it. Like that's only like advancement you have. Is you have the shield and you can bounce off people's domes. That's, a, that's about it. I mean, you, other than that, you don't have the strength to be able to ha fight them hand to hand. It just ain't happening. So... I thought that was cool, and then we end up seeing, you know, of course, you know, Bucky and Sam walking back, and, and he's just like, and, and it seems like what's going on in that sideboard brain of yours, and he's like, you know, I don't, I don't even want to talk about it, I'm, I'm still annoyed at you in a way that this, one, one you did this, and one, we just got our asses handed to us, I'm, I'm not happy about it at all. So just to see how he's not happy about that, and of course, you know, John Walker and his friend are, you know, are in a Humvee, are in a Jeep, and they end up picking, and one end up picking them up, pick them up, and take them back to the, uh, back i guess back to the uh the hangar so they can go home he's like you like they're, it's, a, it's a couple of miles away just get in the truck with us and then pretty much they're just not responding because they're both they're not happy with john walker taking up the shield because again no one was supposed to take up the shield after sam gave it to the mu the museum no one was supposed to take it up the government literally screwed him the government said okay yeah this is the right thing for you to do we're going to keep it in here and then they lied and they gave it to a white dude that literally the end sequence hurt me a lot because just see because it just because the one i'm gonna be honest my one safe haven and all the crap that goes on in the world is marvel movies and superhero movies and to see when i try to escape from all the crap and all the and knowing that the fact that you know there is still racism in the world i try to escape two comics books and, and escape two shows and movies and just to see this enter my world that went, where i try to escape it hurts me. The, the whole topic hurts me a lot because I can't stand people that can be like that. I don't understand how people can think like that about race or or, how, or just how people are born or anything. I just I can't stand people that just they, they think that's okay. And just to see, it really hurts me that we're getting into this topic. But it's a topic that needs to be told. And this is a story in the comics. And it just it needs to be told. And it needs to. And it I, it's just I don't know. Hopefully this will this will resonate with people and you know i feel like every bit helps when we can talk about this subject and i feel like hopefully it's in the right tracks where the, where there could be changes and th and things can change i hope but i don't know so we end up seeing the fact of it is that when they do end up getting into the car with uh john and his friends he's just not like but he's like he's just not happy john started talking to him like we should work together we should be a team and he's like no, and bucky's like no sam's like no that's not happening and then he's like he's like 
and he's like, I don't even know. He's like, um, uh, the super soldier serum doesn't really run, uh, it doesn't really have the best track record. He's like, no offense, Bucky. And then meaning what? Like, it didn't have the best track record with Steve? What are you trying to say? Because Steve's a, a, a much, 100% a better dude than you, my guy. I'm sorry. You think you're probably better than him, but you're not. So when he said that, I'm like, okay, you're, you're yeah, no, no. When, when, when John said that to Bucky, oh, it doesn't have the best track record. Sorry, Bucky. Yeah, Bucky got it and ended up. I, I, I know, but like, you see what that, you, you see what I'm saying, Beth. Like, like it, he was, he was inferring to also Bucky that he didn't, have, because of one Bucky and because of Steve. Okay. About the, the use of the serum. And that annoyed me. I was like, that's bullshit. So, um, and Bucky just wasn't having it. He just told him to stop the car and he got out. And then the second that, you know, John's like, you know, it'd be help if I had Cap's wingman right next to me. He's like, oh, wait. And, it all, and when, it, when it got to there, Sam just got out. He said, you know what, I'm out. Forget this crap. And then he just, he left too. I'm sorry. This dude, I don't know what his agenda is, but I'm sorry, dude. You shouldn't have taken that. You shouldn't have taken that man up. You shouldn't have. And you, you knew it wasn't right. You must have saw the, con the the museum thing where it was supposed to stay in the case. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what, what morals this dude has. I can't wait to see how far he's going to go. Because I, I know he's a bad guy in the comics. So I'm wondering where, where, where is it going to take it where the shield finally gets taken from him by Sam and Bucky. Because of course, the, um, of course um, you know, the people that gave him the shield, the military, and everything, they're not going to take that from him. Even if he does do something wrong. Because they don't think it's wrong. So, because this cap and our cap have different morals. And our cap had good morals. This cap has, I don't even know what. So, just to see, I can't wait to see when Sam and Bucky take the shield from this dude. But we end up getting to the point also where, of course, he gets, uh, um, after that situation, I'm pretty sure uh, Bucky and Sam both go to, uh, they know one place where probably, like, there's a way that, you know, about the super soldier serum and everything. And he knows that there's more of them that, you know, he has to go to somebody to get more information on why maybe a little bit more information on how that was, how that's possible. So we end up getting to the point where Sam and Bucky end up going to Isaiah Bradley's house. And again, Sam doesn't know who Bucky's talking about. Like, he's like, I know a person that could give us some information. And right when we get to Isaiah Bradley's house, I knew right away that's where exactly where we were going because I've been hearing, you know, you know, Easter eggs and lead up to the show that there were, apparently there was a black Captain America, like right after Steve Rogers and no one knew about him and the government kept that hidden. And just to see that story come to light when they go into his house or they wouldn't even get, they weren't even allowed to go in his house because the kid that wouldn't let, it, let, let him in apparently is going to be the cat, like it's going to be the, um, in the Young Avengers, and he's going to become Captain America in the Young Avengers because we've seen I've seen in the cartoons in the Young Avengers that th there is a black Captain America, a teenager that takes up the mantle. So I think that is who that is. So we end up seeing that he just won't let him in, and then he, he said, and Bucky's like, just tell Isaiah that you know, uh, about tell me, tell him, oh, remember um this guy and wherever, and he'll know what I mean. And then he lets he lets him in. And Isaiah's like, I just wanted to see if you, um, if you still had your arm back because you remember the last scuffle that we had, I, you know, took half of your arm with you and I just wanted to see if you could grow it, if you grew it back. And literally when he said that line, I'm like, holy shit, man, damn. I mean, let's, uh, this, um, it seems like there's some tragedy here and, and I can't wait to find out more about this. And he says more and says that he was experimented on. And he was sent after, like they sent him, they put him behind enemy lines to go after Bucky and then they, and then to, um, to pretty much to, and they, what they did to him is that they put him in a cell, a prison cell for years after they experimented on him. And that, and that's just how they repaid him. Like they, they put him in a prison cell. They did experiments on him. Hydra did. And he said, you know, he's like, it, it, it makes sense with you people saying it's a Bucky, meaning like I guess he meant Hydra that, you know, that's just something you guys do. And you guys just, you know. And that's the thanks I get for, you know, doing all this, you know, getting experimented on, you know, trying to help out America. And that's what I got. I got, I got years in prison and I got experimented on. And just, as, and, and to know that, you know, that is a true part of our history is that, you know, that we got experimented on, you know, and it's messed up. I just can't believe that that's our history of America. It's just crazy to me that that's just a thing. And I just, I can't, I just, I can't, sometimes I can't process that. And it just hurts me so much that, you know, people think like that. People were willing to put people just because of their color and, and just hurt them and do things to them. I just can't, I can't get it. I just can't stand that. 
Um, but literally, um, that was just heart wrenching. And the fact that he's like, how come, how come no one's, how come no one's heard about the story? How come, how come anything? Like, how come no one knew he was a super soldier? How come no one knew what he did? How come he just got no, like, how come Steve didn't know about them? Like, how, how, why isn't this out? And he's like, I just didn't like, and he's like, I didn't want to tell Steve when I came back, you know, I, cause I, I didn't want um, Isaiah to go through any more pain than what he has been through in his life. And pretty much Sam doesn't think that's okay at all. He should have just told, he should have told his, his cat because if you would have told Steve, Steve would have done something about it. And that is true. Steve is, that was that dude that would have definitely have done something about it and would have said thank you and would have tried to do everything he could to get that out there and to let him know that he, that dude has done so much to help out America and, that, and that's the respect he got. And he would have done that. And I, I, and that's just a dude Steve was. So I understand why Sam is mad at him that, you know, he didn't want to tell him because like, I understand. Yeah. Because he didn't like, cause you know, Bucky didn't tell Sam didn't tell Steve didn't tell anybody that, 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 and that needs to get out. And I'm hoping that gets out. And I think by the end of this series, Sam won't take up the mantle. I think Sam will give the shield to Isaiah and be like, this belongs to you. This belongs in your family. It's your legacy. Um, I, I want you to take on the mantle as Captain America. And I think it will go, he will give it to, I think it's his son that opened the door and give it to him and he will be a part of the Young Avengers and take up the Captain America mantle. I think that's where it's going to go. I think that's my theory. I want to know what your theories are about that, but I think that's where it's going to go. So we end up seeing the scene where, of course, they walk, they get kicked out of Isaiah Bradley's house because Isaiah's angry and he's furious that, you know, because all the history is coming back and he doesn't want to hear it anymore and he wants everybody out, especially Bucky. So they leave and then guess what happens? The cops show up and pretty much essentially think that Sam is hostile. They don't know he's the Falcon. They just see him as a black man and think he's hostile, hostile and pretty much, and he's like asking, um, uh, Bucky, oh, are you okay, sir? Are you okay, sir? Is he is he bothering you? Meaning, is, is, is like Sam bothering you? But they didn't say Sam. They say, like, oh, is this black man bothering you and all that? And and that's how America is. That's how our. That is literally how it is in today's society. Uh, of the, that is what happens when you when you have uh, b like with, whether you're black, wh whether it just, it doesn't matter. Any it, it it happens, and I think that's super messed up, literally. And when that happened, I'm like that. Because that's my fear of me walking down the street and that happening to me. Literally, that's my fear. And I shouldn't have, no one should have to fear that. And that, and that literally is my fear. And the fact that we got to, we, we saw Sam have to go through that and everybody was watching. And he's like, he, he's like, do you, and, and, and Bucky's like, no, he's not bothering me. And do you even know who this is? And then when they, and then when the, when the cop was whispering and the other cops here is like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, Sam. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. That, that, him being an Avenger saved his life. Because I, I have a feeling they would either have killed him, A, or arrested him, and, and literally, and I don't even know. Uh, but they would have probably have killed him, and that's, I, I don't even want to think about that, but that's probably how it would have went. And the fact of it is, is that other cop cars were showing up, from, and that's how it is. And I just, to see that, I'm just happy they're, they're, they're talking about these topics, because they need to be told. And all, so all stories, and all that, when, it, when, it, when, it, when something, like, yeah, it just needs to be told. And I'm just so happy that, you know, Marvel and Disney aren't afraid to talk about these topics and, 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 and show us that this stuff is wrong. And, and I just can't wait to see how this story is going to conclude pretty much because I just, there's just so much weight here of, our, of, of the history of, you know, how, uh, how America is, whether it be in a comic book or whether it be in, you know, in society. But in, in the end of the day, it's the same world. In a comic book, there's racism going on. In the real world, there's racism going on. And... And that's what people, you know, it's it's so grounded comic books in a way, in a sense of everything, except, you know, the superhero elements and everything. But, it, but you know, it is a very grounded situation. And I love how we they're talking about this situation. I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy they're talking about the topic. But when, when Bucky gets, but, then, but when, I guess they get a call in and saying, I guess, Bucky, we need to arrest you because you didn't go to your a therapy meeting. And that is like, you have to do that. Like, that's like it's non-negotiable like you have to start going to your meeting so he gets arrested ends up getting you know um going to the police station he gets um released but not by i guess his therapist by uh john walker releases him saying oh, i can't have this asset in here that can help me out i need him to help me and, and sam you will too uh they don't have to help you do shit my guy uh they can do whatever they want so they're free agents. You are literally the symbol of America or, or like, I guess the way you want America to be. So yeah. Um, 
So yeah, they just weren't happy. Like Bucky, I, I like I don't, I, I don't think he knew who really uh, let him out exactly. Um, but I bet you if he did, he'd be pissed as shit. Um, all I know is that we end up seeing the point where the therapist asks them both to go back and they need and she wants them to fix this situation where they're it seems like they have conflict and they're not working as a team and just it's just not going well. And we end up of course getting to the point where again he said he's like I'm saying he's like I, I, I wanna know why you didn't take up the mantle and when he said you and Steve won't understand this Steve was wrong about this and he's like if he was wrong about this he was wrong about me and that hurts me. And that made me sad is that Bucky again he, Sam, Caps, Steve said it was going to be okay with Bucky, and it's not okay so far. So he just doesn't want him to be wrong about that. About, about like, he just wants Steve to be wrong about that, about him being okay. He wants him to be right. And to see where that's going to go, I know things will get better for Bucky, and I can't wait to see that all play out. But Sam's annoyed that, you know, he, like, pretty much that he lied about Isaiah. And, you know, he, and, he, and, and, and he's also mad that Bucky Day doesn't understand the position he's in of the double-edged sword of becoming Captain America. America not accepting him to be the next Captain America. Or even if he did accept to be Captain America, him not being able to do it because of the way uh, America sees fit of, I guess, who they think is Captain America. So, literally, I, Bucky needs to understand where that, like, what position that, what like, what position Steve left him in. And I feel like... And as in the right mind, Steve didn't really, I feel like, think about that situation. Because, you know, I feel like, again, Steve doesn't, didn't know what, what, what it's like to be, you know, Sam as a black man or as a black man in general. So I love how that's a topic that, you know, really makes us think and wonder, like, yeah, I don't think he really realized that when he gave him the shield of what, that, what does, like, how it's a very conflicted matter in, in a sense. So, and, and I, it just, this was just a great episode just to see that all play out and just to see how in the end of this episode, they end up leaving the police station. They're like, okay, we're going to do this. And then we're not going to talk to each other anymore. And he's like, fine by me. So they both leave. They both go outside. They end up talking to the, uh, John Walker. John Walker's like, okay, like, um, if you guys aren't going to help me, then you guys need to stay out of my way. And then they end up wanting to go see Zemo because Zemo might have any more, and will have more insight of the super soldier serum since he found the other Winter Soldiers and, you know, there was serum there. So he probably, they probably want to know if maybe he gave it to somebody before everything or, or maybe, I don't know how it all played out or maybe if he knows any information on the serum when he found that base that all the Winter Soldiers were kept at. So I can't wait to see that all play out in, in the next episode when we see Zemo. And the way this episode really ended was, I think it was with the, yeah, I think that, yeah, and, and that's how it ended. We ended up going to Berlin and we ended up seeing Zemo and, you know, his cell and then pretty much that's where it ends. But, you know, I, I'm just excited to see where everything is going to go. I'm excited to see where the Flag Smashers and all that ties in. I'm excited to see where, you know, John Walker's story ties in and his friends. I'm excited to see where how Sam and Bucky are going to be able to, on, on how they are going to do this. And what does this mean? Does this mean stop the Flag Smashers and stop John Walker? I'm excited to see all where this all plays out. And as we've seen... How does Zemo get out and everything? I'm just excited because we've seen all the stuff in the trailers, but we we have no idea of like what the story is and where it's all going to head. So I just loved this episode. The action was top notch. The music is is very callbacks to, you know, Captain America, the first Avenger, you know, Captain America, Winter Soldier. I, Captain America music in general is, I, there's something about the music that Henry Jackman does that's just so beautiful and resonates with Steve, with Cap's character so much. Every time I hear it, I just feel, like, strong. And I just love that music so much. Like, I'd say out of everybody that has their theme, Cap seriously has the best theme songs ever. So, the best soundtracks of every one of his movies. I think his movies are the best in the MCU, by far. So, of standalone films. I think he has the best standalone films and the best soundtracks to everything. So, I'm just, I, I just loved this episode. I can't, I, can't, I think, yeah, I, I can't believe there's only, we only have, like, it's, I can't believe this is like a six part series. I wish it was more like uh, WandaVision. I really do because I feel like I, I would want this to be longer than what WandaVision was. But I, I, but I, I just, I don't know. I, I just don't want this to end. I thought this was good. I'm going to rewatch this episode later on because I loved this episode. A lot was going on. I want to pick up the Easter eggs and stuff. But I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comments about everything. And what did you guys pick up? Did you guys pick up any of the of Caps music when, you know, uh, all throughout the um, episode. Did you guys pick up any theories? Or do you guys have any theories? Did you guys pick up any Easter eggs? I want to know everything down in the comments of what you guys thought about this episode. I'm just super excited to talk to you guys about this episode. I love talking to you guys in the comments. This channel is growing so much. Um, my goal is to get to 300 subscribers before the end of March. 
And I know we could do it with your help, guys. So please, again, uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Uh, like this video because that shows that you guys like my content and makes me want to keep dropping these videos for you guys. I love talking to you guys. Again, it's, it's, it's the best part of making these videos for you guys. But without further ado, I'm going to end this video here. I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.